Okay. So, in the previous lecture, we talked about connected components and today we are going to introduce a notion of path connectedness, which is like a more intuitive, no intuitive notion of connectedness. So, let us just see what this is. Okay. So, definition. So, this path connectedness. Okay, so let X be a topological space. And we say X is path connected. If for any points x and y in x, there is a continuous map gamma from 0, 1 to x such that gamma of 0 is equal to x and gamma of 1 is equal to y. So, if we make a picture, so our topological space x might be like this, this x and this y and then there is some gamma which could be very complicated which connects x to y. Okay. Uh, all right. So, the first thing we want to prove is that first result we want to prove is a path connector space. path connector space is connected. Okay, so, being path connected is a stronger notion than being connected. So, proof. Right, so, let us assume that x is path connected. but not connected. Right? Then since, uh, since it is not connected, we can write x as a disjoint union u disjoint union v, right? where u and v are non-empty. Open subsets. Right. So since they are non-empty, right? Uh, let x be a point in U and y be a point in V. Right. So then, as x is path connected, there is a continuous map. gamma from 0, 1 to x such that gamma of 0 is equal to x and gamma of 1 is equal to y. Right. So, now we simply take, so the inverse image, right. So, then 0, 1 we can write it as gamma inverse u disjoint union gamma inverse v. Since u and v are disjoint, the inverse images are also going to be disjoint, right? Uh, and uh, 0 is in gamma inverse u because gamma of 0 is equal to x, which is u, and 1 belongs to gamma inverse of v, right? And both these are open. So, thus we have written 0, 1 as a disjoint union of non-empty open subsets. So, they are open because gamma is continuous and therefore, the inverse image of an open subset is open. right? So, this contradicts the connectedness. 
of 0. Okay. So a path connector space is connected, is connected right. So this completes the proof. So let's see some examples. So 0, 1, all these nice examples that we know are all path connected. Right? So I mean if we take the interval 0, 1, right? So then any two points A and B, we can join it by a straight line, right? So we can define gamma of T is equal to uh, 1 minus t times a plus t times b right so this is then gamma is a continuous map from 0 1 to this interval 0 1 says that gamma of 0 is equal to a and gamma of 1 is equal to b right so any two points can be connected by this path so the same works for the same gamma works for shows that r and Rn are also connected, are path connected. Right. So for Rn, we can just take two vectors, right, and we can join them by a straight line once again. So gamma is 0, 1 to Rn, and uh, this is gamma of t is equal to, let's say we have two vectors a plus t times b. So let's look at uh, S1. So S1 is this circle over here. So once again, given any two points, uh, let's say this is at an angle theta 1, and uh, let's take another point here, which is at an angle theta 2. Right. So this is A and this is B. So then we can connect. So the point is we can connect using a path which starts at A and goes all the way here, right? So, but if you were to write it explicitly, so then we can define gamma of t is equal to e to the power one minus t times theta one plus t times theta two. So we have defined this map gamma t, and we need to show that this is continuous. So we'll write it as a composite of two continuous maps, right? So we have this map from 0, 1 to r, which is t goes to 1 minus t times theta 1 plus t times theta 2. Right. Uh, and then we will take the map from r to c, which is x goes to e to the power x. Right. So uh, this map is continuous. Right. And therefore, this composite is continuous. Okay, so uh, let's try to see that the spheres. Okay, so this is S one, but uh, how about the spheres, right? So um, let's just do the example for S two. So for S two, right? Let's say this is the equator. Uh, this is the north pole. So let's call it N. And this is the south pole, this is S. Right. So if P is any point which is not equal to the south pole, then we can what we can do is um, we can connect, we can take this point P. Right. We can join the, by the straight line, right. Uh, so, first we consider this path gamma 1 t that is equal to t times n or rather 1 minus t times n plus t times p. Right? But now the straight line is not going to lie on the sphere. So, p is not equal to s that is important. So, uh, so we have to make this lie on the sphere. So, for that uh, note that 0 does not lie on the straight line. 
right the origin. So, maybe I should write 0 um, right. So, uh, then this implies that the norm of gamma 1 t is a continuous map from 0 1 to r right. Uh, and therefore, we can just define this map gamma 1 t by norm of gamma 1 t. Right, this is from 0 1 and the image now will land inside the sphere S 2. So, what is this map? This map is t goes to gamma 1 t divided by norm of gamma 1 t. Okay. This is uh, continuous. So, this is actually this goes to positive roots here. This continuous because we are taking a continuous map and dividing it by uh, another continuous map, right. So, each of the coordinates of gamma 1. So, uh, if I were to write this as gamma 1, 1 t is divided by norm, right. Each of these coordinates is a continuous map because the denominator is never 0. So, this shows that, so this shows that n can be connected to any point p using a path, right. Now, but we want to connect n to s, the south pole also. Uh, so, for that, I mean we can just take two paths and this join them. So, we can take this point. So, first we can connect n to this point and then uh, in the same way that we used constructed this path from n to a point p, we can construct a path from the south pole to the point p. So, so this gives a combined path from the north pole to the south pole, right. So, this, this shows that, so this shows that. S2 is path connector. So, how to combine two paths is something which we will see precisely in a minute. So, and the same proof can be slightly modified. So, a slight modification of this proof also shows that S n, right, a slight modification. of this proof shows that S n is path connected for all n greater than equal to 1. In fact, this proof is better because then we do not have to worry about x goes to e to the power x is continuous, right. We can just do away with that. Okay. So, we have seen some examples of path connected spaces, some nice examples where we actually uh, make some pictures and intuitively imagine. Uh, okay. So, but now let us continue with our discussion. So, as before, okay, so before we continue, like we can also ask ourselves, so we have seen many spaces so far. So, uh, what about the path connectedness of those? So, let us what are the other examples we have seen? We have seen GLNR, uh, we have seen MNR, we have seen the orthogonal groups, the special orthogonal groups, uh, we have seen the unitary matrices SU and right. What about connectedness of these, right? So, uh, GLNR let us is not even connected because we have this determinant map from GLNR to R minus 0 right, which is surjective because we can just take minus 1, determinant of this is minus 1 and of course, determinant of the identity is plus 1, right. So, therefore, r minus 0 which is disconnected, we can write it as u disjoint u and v where u is this half open interval and v is this half open interval, right and this is the point 0 which you are missing out. So, when we take 
So the determinant is a surjective map from GL and R to, in fact, we can just put any lambda over here, lambda on 0. So we get this surjective map. So this implies that determinant inverse of u, disjoint union determinant inverse of v, both are non-empty, gives a, so we can write GL and R as the disjoint union of two non-empty uh, open subsets. So therefore, GL and R is not connected, right? So, but on the other hand, we can ask, what about GL and R plus? This is equal to those matrices A in, or this is just equal to determinant inverse of matrices with positive determinant. Okay. So, we will show that later. This is path connected. So M and R is just R n square and this is a vector space. So since R n is path connected, that same proof gives that M and R is path connected. Uh, once again, the orthogonal groups are uh, not path connected for the same reason because when we take determinant, the determinant, it lands inside this set plus minus 1, right? And this plus minus 1 is just 1 disjoint union minus 1 and once again, uh, the determinant is surjective, so when we take the inverse image of both these open subsets, so uh, we get that shows that O n is not connected. So O n is not connected. So it's important to say that the determinant is surjective uh, because if you look at, I mean, if you look at GL and R plus. So let me just write GL and R. It's not connected. Right? So when we look at the determinant map at the level of GL and R plus, the image lands inside minus infinity, comma 0, disjoint unit 0, comma infinity. Right? But uh, when we take the inverse image of the determinant, determinant inverse of minus infinity, comma 0 is empty over here. Right? So, therefore, it, this does not show that GL and R plus is disconnected. So, what I am trying to emphasize is it is important to say that this map is surjective or at least it meets uh, the components of more than one component of the target space, right? more than one connected component of the target space. Uh, okay. So, but SON, so ON is not path connected. Is not connected, yeah, but S O N is path connected, right? Similarly, U N and S U N are path connected. So these are these three examples are very interesting, but they are also uh, difficult to prove. And to prove these, we need the notion of quotient topology, which we will introduce later on in this course. So we will, towards the end of this course, we will prove that these three spaces are path connected. And I should say that one should emphasize this uh, result because it's very interesting. Because S O N, I mean, is defined as it has a very complicated definition. A A transpose is equal to identity and determinant of A is equal to 1. Right. So, with this complicated definition a priori, if one just looks at the definition, it is not all clear if it is path connected. But, but yes, we can join any point, any two points in SON with a path, which is completely inside SON. Okay. So, now let us continue. Uh, as before, we define an equivalence relation on X. Okay, so this time, so uh, we define the relation as follows. So we say that. So let. So we define. 
x is equal to y if there is a path uh, from continuous map from 0 1 to x such that gamma of 0 is equal to x and gamma of 1 is equal to y. Right, so, this is new equivalence relation and let us check that. So, let us check that this defines an equivalence relation. Right, so, we need to check three things. So, first we need to check that x is equivalent to x. Right. So, this is easy. So, we just take, take the constant path. So, in other words, gamma from 0 1 to x and gamma of t is equal to x for all t, right and the constant path is continuous. So, the second is if x is equal to y, then y is equal to x, right. So, suppose since x is equal to y, there is a path gamma such that gamma of 0 is equal to x and gamma of y, gamma of 1 is equal to y, right. So, then take the, take gamma 1, define gamma 1 of t is equal to gamma of 1 minus t, right. So, gamma 1 is the composite of 0 1 to 0 1, this is t goes to 1 minus t, which is obviously continuous and then here we have gamma, right. So, gamma 1 is a path from, so gamma 1 is a path from y to x. Okay, so, basically what if this is gamma, this is x, this is y, so gamma is going like this, then gamma 1 traces it in the opposite, the same path in the opposite direction. So, in particular gamma and gamma 1 have the same image inside x, they have this, they are different maps from 0 1 to x, but they have the same image. Okay. And the third thing we need to check is if x is equal to y and y is equal to x, then x is equal to z. Right. So, here we will use a theorem that we uh, learnt some time back. It is about how to uh, check continuity of a map by restricting it to two closed subsets. Right. So, let uh, so Since x is equal to y, we have two, we have a path gamma 1 from 0 1 to x, a continuous map says that gamma 1 of 0 is equal to x and gamma 1 of 1 is equal to y. And since y is equal to z, we have this path, so is it gamma of 1, sorry this is gamma 2, gamma 2 of 0 is equal to y and gamma 2 of 1 is equal to z, right. So, uh, basically this x, this y and this z, right. So, here we have gamma 1 and here we have gamma 2, okay. So, now we define uh, this map from h Okay, first we define a map from h1 0 half to x. So, h1 of t is equal to gamma 1 of 2t. Okay, and then we define a map h2 from half comma 1 to x by h2 of t is equal to gamma 1 of 2 t minus, gamma 2 sorry of 2 t minus 1, okay. So, uh, let us check that h 1 of half is equal to h 2 of half, right. So, is this, is this equal? So, h 1 of half is gamma 1 of 1 which is equal to y and h 2 of half is 
uh, gamma 2 of 0 which is also equal to y right therefore they are equal right. So, now this what does this mean this means that on the interval 0 1 this half right let us call this set A and let us call this set B right. A is the closed interval 0 half and B is the closed interval half 1 right. So, this to x we have defined this map. So, this map is h 1 on this 0 half and it is h 2 on half comma 1 on b right. So, this defines a map h and this map is I mean this actually defines a map because both h the only point of intersection. So, h 1 is a map on a and h 2 is a map on b and both h 1 and h 2 agree on the intersection in this case the intersection is just a point half right. So, therefore, it defines a map we get a map of sets right now h from 0 1 to x. So, the question is is h continuous. So, now recall our theorem right. So, h is continuous. So, since right a comma b contained in 0 1 are closed subsets uh, a closed subset right. So, h from 0 1 to x is continuous. if and only if h restricted to a and h restricted to b are continuous. So, obviously, a and b have the subspace topology right, but h restricted to a is exactly h 1 right and what is h 1? h 1 is uh, h 1 is the composite. So, first we go from 0 half to 0 1 t goes to 2 t right and then we apply gamma 1 to x and gamma 1 is continuous and this map is continuous. So, therefore, their composite is continuous and similarly h restricted to b is equal to h 2. So, what is h 2? First we go from half comma 1 to 0 1 by t goes to 2 t minus 1 and then we compose with gamma 2. So, gamma 2 is continuous this map is continuous the first this t goes to 2 t minus 1 right because we have seen that all polynomials in the coordinates are continuous. So, therefore, this composite is continuous right. So, this implies that uh, h 1 restricted a and h restricted a and h restricted b are continuous. This implies that h is continuous right. So, moreover h of 0 is equal to. So, h is defined to be h 1 on the interval 0 half right. So, h of 0 is equal to h 1 of 0 which is equal to gamma 1 of 0 which is equal to x right and h of 1 is equal to. So, h is defined as h 2 on the interval b. So, it is h 2 of 1 which is equal to gamma 2 of 1 which is equal to z right. So, thus h is a path from x to z right. So, this shows that x is equal to z ok. So, and this also shows if I have topological space x and if I can join two points x and y with a path and y and z with a path then I can join x and z with a path which is precisely what we used over here in the example of the sphere. So, we can join the north pole to any point p and uh, then so we can join the north pole to this point p right and then p we can join to this point s right so therefore we can join the north pole to s okay so uh, this this defines an equivalence relation on x right. 
So, the equivalence classes are called the path components. And similar to the proposition about connected components that we proved last time, we have this proposition about path components. Uh, one. Every path connected subset. So, okay, so we can write x as a disjoint union of x i's. Now, x i's are path components. Every path connected subspace of X is contained in some Xi. In fact, it's, co it's contained in a unique Xi, right? And two, every each Xi is path connected. So, both these will prove that uh, x i are maximal path connected subspaces of x. Right. So, notice that earlier we had a third point which said that when we looked at the connected components, we had that the connected components are also closed, Yeah, but this is not true for path components. Okay? So, we will see a counter example in the next lecture. So, remark unlike, so maybe I should make this in red, yeah, this is an important remark. So, unlike the connected components which were closed closed in x, yeah? the path components need not be closed. So, we will end this lecture here.